has happened here? A pilgrim arrived last night. He told us that he is returning from the north and carries a sacred object. A group of horsemen arrived asking us to hand him over. We refused. They told us they would burn down the village and kill us all, even though we were outnumbered. The leader gave the, the order to kill us all. Men, women, children. He took the magic object from the pilgrim. What object? A strange metal mirror. All the survivors were driven into the houses. They hammered on the shutters and doors. Set the houses on fire. I put up the most resistance. And that's why they crucified me. I swear by Kroll that those who took the lives of my relatives and all the villagers will pay with their blood. I will hunt them to the ends of the world and take my revenge, even if it costs me my own life. only if his horse cannot go any further, and even then, he just alights, and leading the horse, progresses on foot. The murderer's tracks are relatively fresh, and Conan, who has learnt many useful skills, can easily follow them. When he finds that the group of riders are heading towards the Black Mountains, he hastens his progress, for he knows that there is practically only one road that the group can follow across the mountains.
and attack him. Kill him like a dog. The rest will continue. I'll stay here just in case.
few days, the Picts were close at Conan's heels. Canoes made from an birch barn were pursuing his boat a pack of hungry wolves after a wounded deer. The Sumerian managed to stay beyond their sight, but the Picts were closing in, searching all the small islands, crooks, and mouths of inflows where he could hide. Fortunately, that was holding them up. He escaped them thanks to an immense, almost inhuman reserve of strength. He drew the boat forward with mighty rowing strokes and rested only at places where the fast flowing river allowed. However, this could not last for long. The pursuers had many paddlers, but he was alone. Fate led Conan to a place which had such a reputation that it was avoided even by the cruel and wild Picts. When the Shaman realized how far they had gone in the heat of the hunt, he quickly ordered his bloodthirsty warriors back. He believed that the evil surrounding this place would destroy his men as certainly as it would kill the Sumerian they pursued. In the cave of a solitary rock, there resided the remains of a strange race, ruled by long dead spirits. Here, evil lived in its most Concentrated form. Soaked through the floors of our fortress, and with your meat, 
I will feed my role. Kill stranger. Kill kill stranger. Yes. Feed my servant, my faithful dogs. Kill the stranger and revive his flesh. And bring this thief to the altar of the great Anuata, the hair god. you can do? Fight a weak woman? Let her go! And see how it feels to fight a strong warrior. Blood. I have blood.
did you get here? What do you mean? I've heard of a treasure that's said to be hidden here. Hmm. Where are you from? From Cordava, but I haven't lived there long. Immigrant? Uh, more like a refugee. This could help you now. We must flee. What's going on?
punishment will punish God. Um, let us flee. Do you want to travel with me? Thanks, but I can take care of myself. My name is Iron. I lived in our engine, but it was too hot for me there. You are a thief, aren't you? I am Conan the Chimera. But to tell you the truth, all the treasures are long lost. It is nothing more than magical rubbish. An illusion that has turned into dust. By Canaan! So my whole trip was a complete waste. I must head south. I think that we can agree and travel for a while together. In these lands, it's not bad if someone can cover your back. That just might work. I'll return to Cordova.
you? Where will you go? I am pursuing a group of riders who have murdered my relatives. A hideous band. They have a vulture as a symbol. A vulture as a symbol? But that's the new cult that's recently appeared in Kodava. People hate them because they're arrogant and evil. But they have a lot of money so they can get away with anything. So they have a temple in Cordava? Then it is decided. Okay, we can travel together. But if you think you can take liberties with me, I'll kill you. <laughs> it's a deal. For some days, the giant Sumerian and the little gracious Zarin traveled along the increasingly strong flowing Black River towards south. The Picts followed them for a long time, but common perils that endanger a pilgrim on such a big river as the Black River were for Conan little more than minor nuisances. They kept to the left side, the Aquilon part of the river, and stayed overnight on islands where big predators rarely reached. To snatch a fish or a buck was easy for Conan, so they were in no danger of starving. We can only guess if during their common journey, their relationship went beyond the boundaries of friendship of mutual travelers. And what happened in the canoe? It took them almost a week to arrive in Cordava. They slipped in under cover of darkness around the western hook of Cordava Harbor. Above the vast water area of the southwest horizon rose the sun. The Cordava Harbor, one of the biggest naval crossings of the western coast and maybe of the whole world, was quite narrow and sizable at that time and the place where it was deployed perfectly chosen. Competitors in terms of size for Kodava could only be Messania at the entry of River Tubor, and then Kami built at the entry of River Styx. But Kami was in the area of Studia, and this grim harbor of the Black Empire was avoided by many merchants and sailors. But daily, dozens of ships entered Cordava and then sailed either to the Great Western Ocean or towards North or South. And the city was crowded with the most fanciful mixture of people you can imagine. have to go our own way. But I can't remain indebted to you for saving my life. Look, I have some friends here. I can ask them about the Vulture cult. I believe I can get some information from you. I'll meet you today at noon at the large marketplace, and we'll see what I've come up with. But take care of yourself. I would not like to lose the information.
am looking for a cult that has a vulture as its symbol. My son, to speak means gold here, but gold melted in your throat. Have you not heard anything about the vulture cult? No, sir. I do not trade birds. But what about fish, sir? I have all types and sizes. You are my first customer. I can give you a discount. I once sold a sturgeon, and the buyer found a pearl the size of a bean in its stomach. It was so beautiful that he was killed because of it on the same day. No thanks. I don't have time to cook a meal, and I do not like to eat raw fish, unless I'm starving. Perhaps I ask in vain, but have you heard of the Vulture Cult? Sir, I have to earn my living. Uh, I sell tableware, not information, but information is expensive here. Hmm. All right. I will buy this jug. Here's your money. Oh, let the gods reward you, sir. What were you asking about? Whether you have heard of the Vulture Cult. No, sir. What's this? You've made the wrong decision, haven't you? You still have a lot to learn. Perhaps if I broke your arm, you would remember it for a lifetime. But you're lucky it's me you were bumped into. Hey! 
I am looking for somebody who can tell me something about the vulture cult. I see you can hold your word. You didn't believe me? I really don't like being beholden to anyone. So, have you learned anything about the vultures? We'll see. My uncle is Cordava's librarian, chronicler, and archivist. He promised to have a look at the vulture cult and to get as much information as he can. You'll find him at the other side of the square, in the one-story house, the one that has the quill and inkwell, instead of the house sign. So... My debt is paid, Samaria. Ah, something could be had from this. You, woman, will regret this. And so will your old man. The vulture will pay you back. Now I'll pop into the temple, and I'll try to squeeze as much as I can out of it. But I have to be careful. Exactly say that I'm glad to see you, but what else can I do? Irene has asked me to do it, so anyway, I live in constant fear that one day I will open my curtains and see a gallows in the square and Zyrene on them. I have had a look at those vultures, but you know it's not that easy. They have a temple in the city, that's true, but no one seems to know about them. In the old documents, I have found nothing. Well, there is no cult of the vulture in history. But in one ancient papyrus scroll that comes from a nameless tomb, there are two prophecies. The first says that one day a cult of evil will arise and dominate the world. To achieve such an aim, the cult needs three magical items scattered around different corners of the world. The mirror of the sun... Hold on. Is it a small mirror? About a foot in length, framed in grey metal. A mirror that virtually casts no reflection. How do you know that? This mirror was the reason it all began. Because of it, they slaughtered Grana. Then there is a statue of the vulture. And one large gem, the Eye of the Dragon. According to the second prophecy, these three tokens are the only things that can prevent the cult's dominance of the world and can even destroy it. No other cult can do it. So if you want to stop the vultures, you would have to get those objects, but I strongly doubt that you can do that. Moreover, to get the Eye of the Dragon, you need something else. Down in the deep south, in the desert of Stygia, lies a mysterious city, buried in the sand. And in it, you would have to find... That's him! The 
barbarian. Now give me my reward. I want my Here reward. Here is your reward, you <laughs> dog. sworn to revenge my dead, and I will do it. Now there's one more harmless old man who's done you no wrong. I will destroy you, even if I have to turn the world upside down! Conan waited in the house until the evening, when the darkness, the eternal sister of night, and inseparable friends of all those living in the shadows of this world, engulfed the city in its star-lined coat. Then, he cautiously slipped out into the street, and quietly, carefully as a large beast on a hunt, disappeared in a tangle of streets leading to the eastern edge of the city where the temple of vulture worshippers is situated.
a man, rather a wild beast. He fled, sir. And what about that woman who still sniffs around us? Her we have caught. She's here in the temple and can pay for her crimes. No, we'll need her later. I'll take her to the highest one. Prepare her and bring her to the mirror. Ah. So he's fled? And has he fled far? You, you idiot, you drooping camel, how dare you? No, enough, enough! Finish him quickly and thoroughly. I hope that I won't see that dog again. Hey, hey!
On the advice of the Cordavian librarian, he headed directly south. His journey was long and led through one of the most desolate parts of the world, the Great Desert of Studia, a true hell on earth indeed. A place devoid of devils, only because even devils couldn't survive. An infinite sea of sand and murderous heat that sooner or later will kill everything alive. Then came the sandstorm, the merciless Samur, a scourge of the desert. What the desert itself cannot kill, the Samur will. Its tremendous appetite will devour mountains, valleys, and cities, sometimes for ages, at others for a year, or two, or a hundred, only to spit them out later, like a gnawed bone. The sand rage of the desert storm has proved too much for Conan's horse, but even Conan himself was at the end of his strength. At this moment, he saw some truly bizarre buildings on the horizon. Buildings that were not there before. Samud has unearthed the ruins of the mysterious city. The tough Cimmerian laid all the necessary things upon his back and headed for the stone towers rising up from the sands. in vain, as the mirror has finally reached its true destination. It is now in the hands of our master. The only thing you can find here is your death. A mirror? My chrome, I don't care about a mirror. And I wonder what use you will find for it when you no longer have a head. I am searching for you to pay back my debt. Your hands are stained by the blood of my family. And you will pay for it! Dang it! Again, you had tremendous luck, Barbarian! But this is not the end. We will meet again. If I were you, I would think twice of any step further south. Go back, or you're a dead man!
rise up. You are the last of our nation and must defend our city against the intruder. No one can damage what we have built. Oh, great Atlantis, your days are yet to come. Our glory will return, and we will rule the world again.
mighty Sumerian has fought the next step towards his goal. Now, he is in possession of another object needed to destroy the hated cult of the Vulture. He only has to reach out his hand, and the amulet is his.
What the mighty Sir Marion has lived through on his journey would no doubt have killed many other men. The heat of the desert was behind him, and after a narrow stretch of grassy prairie came a dense, difficult to penetrate jungle. Silence, disturbed only by the shrieks of the vultures, was now succeeded by the never-ending chorus of birds and animals. Conan bore everything with the stoical calmness of a wild beast that he himself, in fact, harshly was. He knew that he had crossed the borders of the jungle realm of Darfar, where he would have to face all the dangers of the jungle, including predators and snakes, as well as wild cannibals. But this did not disturb him in the least. He never bothered with things in advance because he was used to taking things as they come and dealing with them directly on the spot.
Atlas, Conan disappeared again into the green sea of the jungle. Only a few mortals could travel through this hell of a jungle. There were troublesome insects, mosquitoes, and big leeches in the swamp areas, while in the dry deserts, large scorpions and poisonous spiders roamed. The mighty barbarian himself was half a beast of prey, which, together with his fatalism, enabled him to survive where the civilized man would not have the least hope. Dagger in his teeth, he swam across rivers full of crocodiles. Sword in hand, he fought the wild beasts, climbed the rocks where even a chamois would not dare to tread. And he avoided the inhabited land, not out of fear, but because he did not want any delay. He lived on what was at hand in the jungle. For the last couple of days, he could see the smoke rising up to the sky, and he knew this was the next destination on his journey. The volcano of Guagabe. It took him days to climb up to the plateau, in the middle of which was the large cone the Guagabe Volcano, and another day before he finally stood at its base.
Bravo! <risos> Stop it, girl. I will not harm you. What is going on here? Who are you? What did the soldier want from you? Priests of the Vulture enslaved the men from the village and, and forced them to build a fortress here where they collect sacrifices for the Vulture Temple. They drive them in from the surrounding area and if there aren't too few, they will catch a person from the village. And this time it was to be me. They keep rescuing me, but they will catch me again sooner or later. There are not many of us left. The life of our tribe is coming to an end. So, the Vulture Temple. Those are the dogs I've been looking for. I've been tracking them around half the world. Not the life of your tribe, but the life of vultures is coming to an end. Listen to me. How can I get inside that fortress? Where is the entrance? Which is the path to it? The gate has a special lock, which can only be opened by them. Okay. But the wall can certainly be climbed somewhere, or there is another way inside. Do not go there, they will kill you. Our men tried it initially, but in vain. Nobody has a hope against the vultures. Nothing will stop me. It is either them or me. And I will do everything for it to be them. Well, there is one more road, which was discovered by one of our men not long ago. He was a brave warrior and set out for the fortress where his wife was held captive. Unfortunately, he did not return. Do not go, you will die! Show me the way!
will take care of those jackals. Flee! Save yourselves! Do not stay in the way here. You have saved us, and we thank you. None of us will forget you. By Chrome, what's going on here? What is this bloody fortress for? What do the Vulture Devils do here? They got me two months ago, and all this time I've been watching the giant vultures carrying away the victims to some unknown place. What they do with them there, this I don't know. But rumor has it that they sacrifice the selected victims in some terrible ritual, and what is left is fed to these horrifying monsters. What do you mean, carrying away? Every third day, the acolytes from this fortress will prepare one bound victim on the stone altar. At noon, one of the horrible monsters will come, take the helpless victim and then fly away. Then you can only watch them disappearing into the distance in the east. This is exactly what I need. I need to find that hideous temple. I have to get there. I have some things to settle with the Vulture cult. And I feel the day has come when they are finally going to pay. But there is no way you could get there. The priests can get there from their temple thanks to the magical mirror. But you don't have that mirror here. And a mere mortal can never reach that place. The only way there is in the claws of the Vulture. As a sacrifice. So I'll fly as a sacrifice. Have you gone mad? That was a joke, wasn't it? No, listen. You really mean it? By Mitra! All right, if you must. Uh, could we help you in some way? You are going to certain death, but if you succeed... By the gods! It's simple. You'll pretend that nothing has happened here, and I'll pretend to be the victim. And when the bird comes... We'll see how he'll sing when I cut his throat at the end of the journey. It must look like you're bound like all the others. But that's it. It looks good. And now be careful. It's almost noon. I think I can hear the flapping of the wings. Good luck, barbarian. The vulture feed on the corpses, but who will take care of the corpses of vultures? A mighty warrior is coming, whose power is much greater than you can imagine. You have taken a too strong morsel, and it will choke you to death. The time of revenge is near. And Crow is at our side.
enough chit chat. Bastard, come on my blade!
kill him!
And you, slave, start reading magic mantras. Aksum se si salosus ilaso
Thanks to you, the cult of the Vulture was destroyed, and Conan won the struggle against the evil that threatened the world. A long and varied life awaited him, and it was not long before he became king of the largest kingdom of Aquilonia. But this is another story that many of you know from the Namidian Chronicles, describing the further fate and rise of Conan the Barbarian, the one called the Mighty Samaria. Later, King Conan the Great.